Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. And a sentence of scripture from Psalm 124, verse 7. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our first hymn is hymn number 657. O God of Bethel, by whose hand. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? O Lord, open our lips. And, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, it is now, now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The first reading this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 6 to 8. And if you wish to follow it in the Pew Bible, it can be found on page 729. Please be seated. This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people. And what is yet to come? Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and we say together the appointed psalm this morning, which is found on page 691 of the prayer book. And it will be Psalm 86, reading verses 11 to 17. Psalm 86 on page 691. <coughs> Teach me your way. Teach, Teach me your, your way, way, O Lord, and, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your steadfast love towards me, for you have delivered my soul from the depths of the grave. O God, the proud rise up against me, and a ruthless horde seek after my life. They have not set me before their eyes. But, but you, Lord, are gracious and full, and full of compassion, slow to anger, and, 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 and full of kindness and truth. truth. Turn, Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength, strength to your servant and, and save, save the child of your handmaid. Show, show me a token of your favour, that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped and comforted me. me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and, and shall be forever. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please proceed for the second reading. And the reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, reading verses 24 to 30, and 36 to 43, and can be found on page 979, the key Bible. <coughs> Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied, and the servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the weed with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. 
At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall start now and sing our next hymn, hymn number 285, The Head That Once Was Crowned With Thorns. <laughs> Skywalker. 
Evil can also be very attractive and subtle. Even words connected with evil have taken on a different currency in recent years. In current jargon, people use the word wicked to describe something as being good and enjoyable. If you're ever up in Port Rush at Walker's Barry's and you see them coming off any of the amusements, you will hear them saying, that was wicked. <laughs> On computer games, evil characters are eaten, knocked out, or exterminated with bright and exciting graphics. For many young people, challenging evil has become a computer game of skill and practice. Evil has been sanitized and is neatly contained within a computer disk and displayed on a television screen or a computer monitor. The truth is that evil isn't glamorous at all. It's all around us, eating away gradually at individuals and communities. To the untrained eye, it may at first be difficult to recognise, and in fact it can be mistaken for harmless fun, as evil has an uncanny knack of disguising itself. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells his followers that like the wheat, the weeds grew quietly and unspectacularly. And it's because the weeds are so difficult to recognise that the owner advises the servants not to weed the field in case they pull up, pull up the wheat by mistake. The wheat and the weeds are allowed to grow together until the harvest when they will be separated. However, it's inevitable that as they grew, some of the wheat will be choked by the weeds. This parable is known as the parable of the wheat and the weeds, and it tells us that it's very difficult to distinguish between the good and the bad plants. In their early stages, the weeds so closely resemble the wheat that it was impossible to distinguish one from the other. <laughs> and when both had headed out, it was easy to distinguish them. But by that time, the roots were so intertwined that the weeds could not be weeded out without taking the wheat out with them. So both were left to grow until the harvest. At that time, the process of separation was a laborious one, and if the weeds were left in with the wheat, they caused the flour to have a bitter and unpleasant taste, which caused dizziness and sickness. We need to be aware that evil is not a thing out there in another country or in a haunted house. Evil is present in a society which allows people to sleep on the streets, a society which allows families to become so impoverished that they break down, a society which neglects the care of the young the sick and the lonely. <clears throat> like the weeds growing in the wheat field, evil grows quietly and unspectacularly, choking and weakening all it surrounds. It can be present in our homes, in our families, and in our hearts. When we think of evil, we very often think of obscene acts of terrorism or horror stories like The Exorcist, but it's much more likely that you and I have to deal with the small issues which, if they get a grip in our lives, have a tendency to multiply and enlarge and get a grip on our lives. We may not perpetrate acts of terrorism, but we all have the capacity to let temptation get a hold of us. I remember once reading about an old Sioux Indian who once asked a white man to give him some tobacco for his pipe. The man gave him a loose handful from his pocket. And the next day, the Indian came back and asked for the white man, as he had found a quarter dollar amongst the tobacco. Why don't you keep it? asked a person standing nearby. I've got a good man and a bad man here inside me, 
said the Indian, pointing to his breast. And the good voice says, it's not yours, give it back to the owner. But the bad voice says, never mind, you've got it now, keep it. And the good voice says, no, no, you must not keep it. So I don't know what to do, and I thought I should go to sleep. But the good voice and the bad voice kept talking all night and troubled me. And now when I bring the money back, I feel good. We all have choices to make at every moment of every day about whether we will pursue good or evil. We are not powerless, as St Paul tells the Romans. We are not trapped and we do not have to live according to the flesh. By the power and grace of the Holy Spirit within us, we can follow the way of righteousness. God will not make us good. It is always our own choice. But he can and he does give us the necessary strength and the resources to follow his path. So we have been warned. The parable says that at the end of the world, those who have high moral standards will be gathered together and will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. But what does it take to be righteous? In the book of wisdom, we are told, the righteous person must be kind. God is said to judge with mildness and to govern with great forbearance. That is a model for us all also to follow. It's a process which begins in our own families, in our communities, and it spreads out into the world. We are called to challenge the quiet, the sinister damage that evil brings to our society, to challenge laws and trends which strip our fellow men and women of dignity and the fair shares of resources. We are called to be active, not indifferent, for indifference like a weed is a quietly growing evil which ignores the cries of the poor and the weak. It's famously said, all that is needed for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. And there's much truth in that. And we would do well to look at our lives and to ask ourselves, what are we doing, both as individuals and also as churches, to combat evil and to pursue righteousness? We need to look at every aspect of our lives, the things we buy, the way we travel, the jobs that we do, the way we communicate with each other, and to consider the effects of our words and our actions. So let us help and encourage one another to pursue righteousness in every possible way, and let us start now. And if you think that these words are unrealistic, just call to mind how a building can deteriorate. The old derelict linen mill, not too, from here, not too far from here in Hilden, was once a thriving centre of trade in the 19th century, when Belfast was the linen capital of the world. Then linen were surpassed by cheaper man-made fabrics, and the building where fortunes were made was no longer needed and fell into disuse. Windows have been broken, weeds and small trees go out of guttering and spouting. It all looks rather faded and pathetic, and has even had to sustain a couple of fires. The ingress of evil is often not something which takes us over in a dramatic way. Rather, it slowly can choke the lifeblood from us. But thankfully, God is in the business of defeating evil, and he can enable us to break free from its shackles. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, be a tower of strength to all who trust in you, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good without you, empower us to work for your freedom and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Standing, we will stand now and sing our next hymn, hymn number 43, Holy is the Seed Time.
in the Galilee Apostles' Creed to be found on page 112. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the King, and grant his government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The colic for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, Nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us say together the second call of the morning prayer on page 114. O Lord, o Lord, o Lord our, our Heavenly Father, Father Almighty and ever-living God, God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep, keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and, and in all things guide us to know and to do your will. will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us continue in prayer. O gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray this day for all Christian people. We pray for George, our bishop, Nicholas, our rector, for all Christian leaders, and for those who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts, and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless, O Lord, all who are seeking to live by what they believe, all who long to hear your word and do your will. We pray for all clergy, readers, those in their training for the ministry and vocation. Give them the strength to know that you are with them always. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech you to bless King Charles, Queen Camilla, William Prince of Wales, the Princess of Wales, 
and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us remember all those who are searching for God. May their search be rewarded with an enduring faith and a commitment to living the teachings of Christ. We pray for all who teach the faith, and may our churches be places of love, shelter, and security. We pray for those who are struggling to believe. May they forget about the God they do not believe in, and meet the God who believes in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who are the victims of war, remembering those who are in the Ukraine, Jerusalem, and the Middle East, those whose lives have been turned upside down, and those who are working to bring them relief from their suffering. We also remember those whose lives have been impacted by the extreme heat in the various countries in Europe, as well as in the west coast of the United States. We ask God to show us how to help, so that his healing and peace will be felt among those who are hurting or injured. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We thank God for all to provide us with food and the essentials of life. We pray for those who have responsibility in the purchasing and the manufacturing of our food, that they may seek the highest ideals and put nutrition before profit. We pray for our farmers and all who grow crops and care for sheep and cattle and livestock, and especially those who are preparing for the harvest in the weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we remember all who are disturbed and distressed, and for all who have suffered from, from traumatic events or who are troubled in spirit. We pray for all who are exhausted or depressed, for all who can find no rest. We pray for those who are sick in hospital or at home, especially those known to us. This morning, remember Stephen. And in a moment of silence, we bring before you their names and pray for their recovery. We ask your blessing in all who are in pain of any kind, and for those who work in the caring professions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray for our loved ones departed. We pray for the families of those who have been bereaved, and especially those who are known to us. We look forward to the time when we shall see and know, when we shall know and love, and we shall love and enjoy you forever and we shall share with your saints in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We shall start now and sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 365, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
bless you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep their hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ.